Hey guys, so in our everyday rush and routine and in our attempts to solve problems in the here and now, I don't know if you have this problem, I do, that we rarely notice how amazing and wonderful the world that we live in actually is. And even the places and occurrences that we learn in geography class can really reveal something breathtaking when you look a little deeper inside them. So due to the harsh climate, it's really not easy to conduct research in desert conditions. The midday sun cooks the sand until the air temperature reaches 140 degrees Fahrenheit. But then everything freezes at night and you might even see frost. Now deserts make up about 20% of the surface of our planet and they're still surprising and poorly understood areas of the earth that hide many interesting secrets. So there's a bunch of conspiracy videos on YouTube about what deserts contain, but today's video, it's not about that. We're actually gonna talk about what is hiding those secrets. So you've probably wondered how thick the sand layer is in deserts. Now I'll tell you that a singular answer for that question is pretty impossible to give because the thickness of the sand layer varies. There's places with no sand at all. So a large portion of the Gobi Desert only has rock. The thickest layers of sand can be found under large sand dunes like in the Namib Desert. It has places where the sand layer can be almost 1,300 feet thick. And one of the tallest sand dunes is Dune 7, Big Papa, which is 1,256 feet tall, where the Eiffel Tower is only 984 feet tall in comparison. So it's really hard to imagine how much sand that actually is, right? And it looks remarkable. Now, according to the Ministry of the Environment and Tourism in Namibia, it's the tallest dune in the world. But uh, we'll talk about that later if that's actually true. So if we talk about other deserts like the Sahara, the thickness of the surface sand layer is about 492 feet, but there are individual sections that are up to 1,000 feet tall. Meanwhile, these huge mounds of sand can actually move thanks to the wind. Now, the Sahara is always growing and expanding to the south in some places as many as a few kilometers per year. But let's get back to the dunes. So when I said that Dune 7 in Namibia is considered by the country's Ministry of Tourism to be the largest dune, that's not quite the case. It really is only the tallest in Africa. So you ready to hear about some true sand giants? So don't know if you've ever heard of the badain Jaran Desert. It's in the Gansu province and the autonomous region of the Inner Mongolia in China. It's 19,000 square miles in size. So the desert has the tallest immobile dunes on Earth, and some of them are up to 1,600 feet tall. Now, despite the dry, windy climate, they remain steadfast thanks to the melted groundwater that comes from hundreds of kilometers away. This unique, gorgeous place is among nature's miracles, like the Ruo Shui River Delta that doesn't flow anywhere and doesn't end anywhere. It's always looking for a new direction to go through the sand. The desert has over 100 lakes in it that are fed by springs. The lakes are in between the dunes. Some of them are freshwater, and others are extremely salty. The Badain Jaran is also a place where the singing dunes are located. Yeah, that's right. It's the sand song. It's caused by sand friction. When it moves, it just kind of produces this low hum that's actually really loud and can reach 105 decibels. And actually, this is found in a lot of deserts, but it's always pretty amazing. So, when moving to a new continent, we can find huge surprises. Our next dune dwarfs the previous one almost two times over. Its height from base to top is about 3,800 feet, and it's called the Cerro Blanco, or White Hill. This sand hill is in South America, in southeastern Peru, and the dune towers over the surrounding mountains and valleys. Now, the Nazca supposed the dune was hiding a water source with a lake or water reserve inside. Now, some of the locals still believe this legend, so they climb to the top and leave offerings there, almost like the Nazca culture members did many centuries ago. Now, the dune climb takes about two hours in the sweltering sun, and the dry wind doesn't help keep you cool, but it does let you sand surf. They could summit the dune using a sand buggy, which would seem more rational, but it's not so easy. Even the strongest vehicles struggle climbing this hill. Now, one way or another, when you get to the top, 
Extreme sports enthusiasts can slide down to the base and enjoy the ride that's about 2,600 feet or more. Now, if you're going max speed, that takes about four minutes, of course, if you don't fall. It's hard to believe that sand dunes can get so large, and this is definitely one of the most unique places on our planet, but it's still not the biggest one. So despite the inhospitable conditions, there are various types of animals living in our deserts. They're mostly nocturnal and they hide during the day in holes or in the shade. So you can find camels, rodents, antelope, gazelle, and predatory birds in deserts. While strolling amongst the sands, you may also come across scorpions and crows and snakes and tortoises. You can also find scarabs, spiders, ants, and other insects. So every desert has a unique ecosystem with different species of flora and fauna, like this surprising desert, which has lagoons. Brazil is a country with the most freshwater reserves in the world, and an amazing find to see a desert in such a humid and green land. In Maranhão, a state in northeastern Brazil, there is the 380,000-acre Lençóis Maranhenses National Park. This unique location is so far from reality, you might actually think it's a mirage. So the whole desert is in an area that swallows up about 386 square miles and is covered in snow white sand dunes up to 130 feet tall. Now at first glance, the park just kind of looks like a typical desert, but it isn't always. Since the Lençóis Maranhenses Park is in the Amazon River Basin, it receives regular precipitation at about 63 inches per year, 300 times more than in the Sahara. So the park receives an abundance of rain from January to June. The water doesn't get absorbed into the ground quickly enough and gathers in the valleys between the dunes, forming ponds with crystal clear water. So it's hard to imagine a desert like this with so much fresh water. But what it does is it actually creates this out of this world view. Snow white sand dunes as far as the eye can see with beautiful blue lagoons speckle in between. Now, several of the lagoons do temporarily dry up in the summer. Others are always moving and even have names like beautiful lagoon, Blue Lagoon and Lagoon of Hope. Since the ocean is so close and brings its strong winds, the dunes move. Up to 80% of the sand is in constant motion, forming amazing patterns on the surface. This desert is surprising because it also has tons of different animal species in it. The turquoise lagoons are home to fish, whose eggs are brought by birds, as well as many turtles, crabs, and shrimp. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. The world's tallest dune is Dune Frederico Curbus at 4,000 feet tall in Catamarca, Argentina. It was named after Argentinian journalist and researcher Frederico Curbus, who discovered its real height. A dune was discovered in the Sepet Mountains in the Fiambella Valley, whose height is greater than the Peruvian dune by over 160 feet. So the dune is part of the Bolson de Fiambella, a semicircular sand valley with huge sand hills in it. As you can see, there are many little known and very unusual places in the world. And if we just take time to look at nature a little closer, we can see its riches in different forms much more clearly. Well, that's all for today. Hope you learned something new. Be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite part of this video was. And uh, we'll see you again next time.